presentation is uh, titled Engram based Serbian text classification. Um, I am uh, Petar Provolovic, the presenter of, of this presentation today, and the other colleagues are Nemanja Radosavljevic, Dušan Vujošević, and Jelena Vasiljevic. And yes, I believe those are rather hard names to pronounce uh, when, when written in, in English. So, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, thank you for your. Uh, for your best effort to, to pronounce it. Um, we need to, to work on um, on better transcription uh, from, from Serbian to English. And this is also part of, of, of this uh, of this speech also. Uh, but please, I forgot to start this. Yeah, so this is me. Okay. Um, the, sorry, I have to move this thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, to start. So, uh, the nat natural language processing is an active area of research uh, with many applications in various fields. Uh, low resource languages uh, are a challenge as such languages lack curated data sets, proper sets of rules, dictionaries, and other elements used in text processing and algorithm trainings. Um, statistical approach is an alternative uh, to bypass the lack of uh, rule-based implementations. And uh, this is actually what we present here. Um, this paper presents a model for classification of unstructured text in Serbian language, uh, which relies on engram statistics extracted from a training set. Uh, the model is trained and tested on a data set collected from a Serbian news portal, which contains text articles written in common language in categories like politics, chronic, uh, Europe, and similar. Uh, so pretty much the common language. Uh, the model was used as a part of a decision support system, which classifies new news articles into given categories, and it achieved the accuracy of over 80%, uh, which proved to be quite decent, uh, considering that the model also provides a, a second guess class uh, to a user. Um, this is one specific example. Uh, but the presented model is, is generic and provides a good basis for a range of applications in business decision automation uh, if you are dealing with low research languages. Now, what we call... Uh, I don't know how to put this on full screen, to be honest. But it's fine, I guess. Uh, what we call low resource languages are languages that lack the proper rules and dictionaries of prefixes, suffixes, stop words, and other elements needed for um, stemming and lemmatization, uh, and other resources needed to properly train the existing language processing algorithms. Serbian language is, to some extent, one such language. Uh, we have dictionaries, of course, but the extent of existing dictionaries and other digital resources, like rule sets for prefixes, suffixes, uh, sets of synonyms, and so on, uh, falls in comparison to English language, uh, which affects the accuracy of language processing models. Uh, some notable resources are uh, Serb Core 2013, a compiled language corpus, uh, Srp Lem Core, a subset of Srp Core, which contains uh, around uh, 3.7 million of lemmatized words, and the Serbian WordNet, a database of words groups uh, grouped in sets of synonyms called sim sets. Uh, those are crucial resources uh, for uh, for any language processing, and um, as previously mentioned, uh, the main drawback of uh, Serbian WordNet is that the researchers in, researchers in this field note uh, that number of words and scene sets is not comparable to English WordNet. Um, in short, we can do language processing, but we expect less accuracy than possible because um, we could have better data sets to, to train the, the algorithms. Now, uh, there are some possible workarounds to bypass the lack of resources. And uh, one approach got our attention, uh, and this is the um, to use Google Translate to translate text to English and then do text processing uh, using all the available resources. Um, okay, Google Translate is not the uh, the only uh, translation service available. Uh, ChatGPT now can do impressive things, and there are other positives, positive aspects for such approach. Uh, but on the negative side, uh, decision support system becomes uh, becomes dependent on external services, which can be a problem for many reasons. 
there is also a problem of possible loss in translation. For example, if you want to use the information about the specific writing style of a person, which can be distorted through automatic translation. Uh, last but not least, we might have a need for a light implementation, uh, for example, to put the uh, decision support system on a client. Embedding a dictionary is probably not the best solution in such case. Uh, the other workaround, or uh, better said, um, approach, is the statistical text analysis where we try to extract some rules from the training data uh, based on some statistical appearances of specific indicators, specific words, parts of words, consecutive symbols, and so on. Um, <clears throat> uh, text pre-processing is an important step in unstructured text classification. Uh, it aims to remove uh, stop words, uh, special characters, and other elements that can be considered as, uh, as noise. Uh, and to normalize the uh, words into canonical form by extracting the root word called stem. It uses one preferred root word instead of all possible synonyms. Um, in usual case, it is performed in several stages, which are listed on the right side. Uh, so uh, the, uh, so to say, noise removal, uh, stemming and lemmatization. Uh, this works well, but has a major problem. Uh, it depends on the language resources, and with low resource languages, this is the um, this is a problem. <clears throat> uh, statistical text analysis based on engrams enables further text analysis and extraction of category specific parts of words, regardless of their lexical form. Uh, it is based on uh, counting the occurrences, and as such, is linguistically independent which makes it suitable for the low resource languages. Uh, Serbian language is morphologically rich, uh, as one word can be written in several forms, using a variety of affixes and con for conjugation, declination, and so on. Repetitive use of a word is expected to statistically emerge engrams that contain the word's stem, as opposed to engrams that contain prefixes and suffixes, uh, which effectively, effectively extracts uh, stems or parts of stems, uh, and allows the implementation of stem-based document feature vectors without lexical resources independent of language. Now, I couldn't help but put this here. Um, and this is, the, this is basically a list of, uh, of uh, all of the forms of the verb write in English on the left and uh, in Serbian. And this is only the base verb. Uh, we can multiply this tenfold if we add prefixes and derive forms. Uh, but the stem is obvious here. It's the first uh, first three letters. So, uh, which further highlights the uh, previously said story that uh, if uh, if if we have multiple appearances of one word in different forms, we will definitely uh, notice uh, um, uh, notice a stem as uh, as statistically more significant than uh, than uh, other parts of the word which which vary. Uh, here we present a model for classification of unstructured text in Serbian language. It relies on a statistical engram text analysis, which extracts category-specific engrams to train a classification model. Uh, the model is trained on a document uh, on document set uh, scraped from a Serbian news portal, which represents a common language. Uh, there are several advantages of this model. Uh, first, it can be uh, used in any natural language. It is fully dependent on the training data set. So whatever you give it to, uh, to the model, it can adapt. Uh, second, the model is fully self-contained and independent and doesn't rely on external systems such as Google Translate. Uh, third, the text is processed as is. Uh, no translation or any other art altering is needed during the process. Uh, which also preserves the uh, writing styles specific to categories if that information is important and uh, you want to use it. Uh, and finally, and quite obviously, uh, the model does not require rules for, for prefix, suffix, and stop word removal and the text normalization into canonical form, which makes it suitable for low resource languages as stated. Uh, data set is formed by scraping the news from Serbian news portal. It required writing a simple scraper, which we happily implemented in PHP, and the uh, resulting data set contains roughly uh, 32,000 documents. Each document contains a title, text, and category. 
um, HTML tags are removed. We have the plain text content only. Um, the table on the right shows the categories and number of collected documents classified in each category. The data set can be considered balanced in terms of category representation. Um, we also see that the categories are thematically relatively close. We have politics, regional, society, chronic, organized crime, European Union. Uh, it's not that we have web development and Greek philosophy, um, which further highlights the measured accuracy, which will be presented later. The presented model <clears throat> uses uh, supervised classification. Um, that requires that the training data set is classified upfront, which is the case in the data set. We have scraped data, which is already classified. Uh, data, data set classes are in use categories, actually. Model uses support vector machine. Other algorithms, such as k-nearest neighbors, uh, can be used for the same purpose, and the model is designed in such a way that the uh, uh, support vector machine node is interchangeable with other classification algorithms in case you find that more suitable. Uh, for all classification algorithms, it is necessary to associate a feature vector to each sample. Um, in this way, each sample is mapped in and dimensional vector space and the classification algorithm can in a specific way recognize in which zone the sample is located and um, associate the estimated best fit class. The assigned and dimensional feature vector is determined by the choice of characteristics considered relevant to the classification. Uh, those characteristics can be binary if some specific word exists in a document or not. They can be numeric, how many times something appears in a document or some other measure, measure can be used. Um, algorithms determine the boundaries of vector classes based on the document feature vectors whose classes are known and form classification rules based on that. Uh, hyperparameters of the proposed model include the um, engram length, uh, which varied from three to five letters, uh, document, vec uh, document vector reduction, and we, we use the engram entropy and the number of occurrences as two measures, and the uh, vector length of 1,000 and 2,000 engrams. Um, this figure shows the schematic representation of the classifier model. Uh, the training phase on the top uh, extracts the document features, creates document feature vectors, and forms the classification rules based on the given data sample, the training sample. Uh, the prediction phase gets a document, extracts the features, creates a document feature vector, and finds the class which best fits the document. A uh, standard way to measure the uh, classifier performance is to split a part of the data set into testing set and compare the classifier output to actual classes. Uh, the classifier performance is, performance is measured, and we will see the results in, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, supervised classification requires assigning a feature vector to each document. Uh, feature vector is treated as a point in n-dimensional space, n being the vector size. And during the training phase, classified documents are mapped into n-dimensional space at the positions defined by the feature vector. Uh, this creates a set of points uh, where each point represents one document of a specified class. Uh, support vector machine algorithm takes the set and finds the boundaries for each class, effectively producing classification rules. The figure on the right shows a simplified case where we have sets of points in three different colors and uh, lines define um, the classification rules. It is not perfect, as we see the uh, blue and red point misclassified, but with proper feature vectors, this can be quite accurate. Classification of uh, new documents is a process of extracting the features of the document, creating a feature vector, mapping the document to a point in n-dimensional space and deciding uh, which area that point falls into, thus assigning a class to that, to that document. In uh, unstructured document classes, in unstructured documents, uh, classes can be considered as uh, specific topics and it is reasonable to expect specific words to appear more frequently in some of the classes. Appearance of a word specific to some class in a document uh, makes that document a bit more biased toward the class. Uh, words can be in various forms, as I said, 
And to properly identify a word, we need some kind of stemming. And here is where the previously mentioned n-gram stemming is applied. Uh, the table here illustrates the stem extraction based on n-grams of the line 3, 4, and 5 letters on four example words. Uh, example words are uh, in Serbian, uchitaj, to load, to load some data, uh, which is from uh, formed from the word read, to read in. Uh, then we have uh, čitamo, we read. Uh, it is one, one form of the word uh, of the verb read. Uh, čitanka, a reading book. And mučitelj, torturer, because it sounds pretty much the same, he has the same letters, but it is uh, completely opposite spin. Uh, first three words have the same stem, čit, while the last word's stem is much. Uh, as can be seen in, in the table, uh, trigram cheat is present in all cases, uh, which which would be uh, which would be a wrong assumption for the last word if we would classify it the same. Uh, four grams seems more promising in this case as we have a cheetah, which is slightly more than than the stem, uh, but it is present in the first three words and not in the last word, where we have muchi extracted as as a possible stem. Five grams pro, uh, provide bad results in this case, as uh, all of the words have quite distinct uh, n-grams and we have nothing in common. Um, this example uh, does not imply a rule, and n-gram length needs to be decided experimentally, uh, though the results expectedly showed that five grams produce divorce results. Uh, example also needs to be seen in the context of classes. Uh, if the first word appears in documents of the class A, the second and third in class B, and the last word in class C, it can be concluded as a rule that trigram uchi is specific to class A, uh, chit to class B, and much to class C. Uh, we can conclude similar for four grams, and um, um, we can um, we can form our classification rules based based on based uh, on on this idea. Uh, feature extraction for a single document results in a vector containing um, every distinct n-gram <clears throat> which appears in the document and the number of occurrences uh, of that n-gram in, uh, in the document. Uh, feature extraction requires some basic text preprocessing in order to normalize the text. Here we, don't, uh, uh, we do not care about the uh, specific text writing styles, so we are happy to to export uh, stems and uh, try to extract as much as possible from text. Uh, the entire process is as follows. Uh, data is read from the CSV file. Uh, text case is converted to lowercase. Classes are assigned per categories in the last column. Uh, numbers are erased. Punctuation is erased. Uh, words shorter than the n-gram length, so three, four, or five letters, are removed from the document. Uh, and uh, anagrams are extracted and counted in each document, uh, which assigns the document a full full length feature vector. Uh, <clears throat> most of the stop words in Serbian are one or two letters, um, which will get ignored. So the anagram stammer uh, work, works as a stop word filter to some extent. <clears throat> Uh, as each document is uh, assigned with a feature vector and positioned into the end dimensional space by values in that vector, a uh, vector needs to be of the same size and have the same dimensions. A uh, vector can be too long for the classifier as they include all of the engrams gathered during, during the training phase. Um, vector reduction is performed as a step which reduces the number of dimensions of the vector space. It is based on selecting the most relevant engrams to get the best classification results. Um, engram relevancy is measured in two ways, the engram entropy and number of appearances. Uh, based on these measures, uh, best rated engrams were included into the uh, reduced feature vector. Uh, vector size was tested for 1,000 and 2,000 engrams, and uh, document vectors created in this way are passed to the uh, support vector machine trainer as the input for training and are used later for the document classification based on the generated classification rules. Uh, uh, 
Scoring the engram relevancy by number of occurrences is simply performed by counting the number uh, of occurrences of an engram in each of the classes and taking the maximum value. Uh, engrams are then uh, sorted by the maximum number of occurrences in the class in descending order, and first n, n being the length of the vector, uh, are included in the, vector, in, in the feature vector. Uh, engram entropy, <clears throat> Uh, scoring the engram, uh, the engram entropy relevancy uh, by entropy is based on the idea of entropy as a measure of uncertainty of an event's outcome. Uh, entropy is highest if an event has equally likely outcomes, as there is no out outcome that is more specific for the event and can be uh, and which can be expected more likely than any other. Uh, if, uh, if one outcome is um, more specific to the event, the entropy of that outcome is lower. Uh, predicting the outcome based on entropy is more accurate for low entropy outcomes, uh, because if we have the entropy zero, uh, then there is only one outcome with probability of one, uh, which means that the event has an expected predefined outcome. In the context of engram scoring, uh, engram is the event and document class is the outcome. And the ideal engram is the one which appears only in one class and has zero entropy. As such, engram is a strong signal that the document containing that engram is in that specific class. Uh, the, problem is, uh, the problem with that are the engrams that appear only once or a few times in the entire data set. Uh, they are very, very specific to the class, obviously, uh, but they're generally useless as they appear quite rarely in the natural text. Uh, and this was addressed by removing uh, all of the engrams with less than average number of occurrences in the class. So basically, we just left, uh, left the um, uh, commonly occurring engrams and uh, extracted those which uh, which are more specific to some to some categories by the measure of uh, of entropy. Uh, the model is simplified in such a way that it uses the engram presence in the document as a boolean indicator, which ignores the incidence of engram appearance in documents. Uh, each engram has a total number of documents it appears in each of the classes, and the number of documents in each class is known. Uh, dividing these two values gives the relative angular frequency in the class in range from 0 to 1. And uh, scaling the uh, sum of relative frequencies to 1 and subsequently scaling the relative frequencies, uh, a discrete a random variable S was defined. The outcomes of S are probabilities of a document belonging to classes and have a joint probabilities defined by engram incidence in documents in those classes. Information entropy can be calculated in several ways. Uh, the, uh, the model uses the formula shown on the slide, um, where S is the probability system of the random variable, the engram incident, uh, incidence in classes. Uh, N is the total number of classes. Uh, S, I are events of a document belonging to class I, and P of S, I is uh, event probability, uh, the probability that the engram belongs to class I. <clears throat> uh, data set is initially split into training set and testing set. Uh, documents in the testing set uh, are used to measure the performance of the classifier by passing them to the train classifier and comparing the classifier output with the actual class of the document. Uh, scorer calculates the accuracy statistics for each class by counting the correct and incorrect predictions, both in terms of document belonging and not belonging to that class. Um, true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives are counted for each class and used to calculate the overall classifier accuracy um, as overall accuracy and coins kappa measures. Overall accuracy expresses the ratio of correct predictions to the total number of predictions and is calculated on the formula on the, on the left. Uh, and we have a TP as true positives, FP as false, false positives, and so on. Um, coins kappa expresses the agreement between two classifiers, uh, in this case, the expected and predicted results. It is calculated by the formula on the right. Um, where uh, 
P0 is the ratio of number of predictions with the same outcome in uh, both scorers to total number of predictions. PE is the uh, probability of both scorers predicting the same outcome by random chance. N is the number of samples. K is the number of classes. And uh, N uh, and K, uh, I is the number of samples which classifier I predicted as class K. Numerator expresses the observed difference and uh, denominator, denominator expresses the maximum difference of trained classifier and random classifier. Uh, for a random model, the overall accuracy corresponds to random chance. The numerator is zero and coins kappa is zero. Uh, for a good model, the observed difference is close to the maximum difference and coins, coins kappa is close to one. And finally, uh, this figure shows the uh, charts with overall accuracy and coins kappa measured for 3, 4 and 5 grams on feature vectors uh, with 1000 and 2000 engrams for both vector um, reduction strategies. Number of occurrences and uh, uh, engram entropy. It is also uh, notable to say that the model was implemented and tested using NIME. Implementation details and descriptions uh, can be find can be found in the paper, and uh, I cannot but advise uh, the fellow researchers to to try this tool if you haven't already before, because it, it proved to be quite uh, quite a decent tool for uh, for text processing and um, and all this. Uh, so uh, to conclude this. Uh, Low resource languages lack proper resources to train language processing algorithms. The proposed model applies a statistical approach to text classification, avoiding the dependency on external services, loss in translation, and other negative effects of workaround solutions. Model is trained on a prepared data set in supervised fashion using n-grams for stemming and as document features. The classifier trained on that data set provided useful accuracy. Classifier allows for automatic categories and tag recommendations in content publishing systems, which was tested with satisfying results. Model can be adapted to other languages with proper data set. We also anticipate that the model could provide good results in categorizing semi-structured and structured documents. Thank you for your attention. I'm open to, to questions if, if any.